What is going on everyone? My name is Benjamin Noak and in today's video we're going to be going over my Garmin Fish Finder Chart Plotter settings. One of the biggest questions that I get is what settings do I use for my 2D, my side view, down view and chart plotter to go out and be successful on the water in identifying fish cover and structure. Uh, so today I'm going to go top to bottom on this unit, explain everything that I do to set this unit up so that you guys can take this information to your graph and set your units up just like I do. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break down in the comment section below or excuse me in the description all of the different sections. So if you just want to know my side view settings, down view, 2D, or chart plotter settings, it'll give you a little timestamp to click on. It'll take you to that point in the video. If you guys haven't already or are new to my channel, please do me a huge favor. Go down, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell because it'll let you know when I post more videos just like this one here. With that said, guys, let's dive into this unit. First things first, we're going to be turning on the graph. Pretty simple. There's a power button right here. For the purpose of this video, I am in simulation setting, so you're going to be able to see everything as if I were out on the water. So this is your home screen right here. You have a bunch of different little options here, little groupings. Um, this first menu is the favorites menu. This is where you can set different favorites so you can easily access your favorite chart combinations. Uh, your second mode is your smart mode. This has a variety of different modes that I don't really play with a ton, but what it is is like specified favorites that Garmin has built into your unit. The combo section here, this is where you can build different combinations. This is where you can utilize different combinations to pull into different screens. So navigation and side view, your charts and sonar, which has your 2D and your down view, as well as your, so, as well as your chart, um, et cetera, down there. Your next is your charts, where you can just pull into your different charts, whether it's a fishing map, forecast, uh, 3D chart, nav charts, et cetera. Your sonar is where you're going to be on your, be able to pick out your sonar screen, whether it's traditional 2D sonar, down view, side view, um, or your panoptic settings, which are down here if you have a panoptics transducer hooked up, your radar if you have a radar hooked up, and then your gauges right here. This is where you can hook up to a bunch of different little um, accessories that Garmin offers for you guys right in this AV gauges and control settings. So from this home screen, if we're just starting on favorites, the first thing I want to go into is the settings menu. The settings menu is where you're going to set up your unit. First off, if we pull into system, sounds and displays, I turn all of my sounds off. I don't want sounds beeping at me every time I touch a button. So I go into beeper and I have it at off. I don't have any alarms set, so I just set it to straight off. And then my backlight is currently set to max. I leave that where that's at, backlight sync, I have on, and my current color mode is day colors. I don't want it to automatically pull into night colors. Uh, if you watch when I switch to auto, it automatically pulls into night colors because it's after a certain period at night, um, which is nice when you're on the water at certain times, but especially in the morning when you get out on the water and you don't think your graph's working, it might be because it's in night colors and you can't see the graph lighting up because there's not enough backlight. So I leave it on date colors at all times. Video out aspect standard, um, I don't change that. And then startup image, here if you'd like, you can put a chip in over on the side here and make a startup image. So that way when you turn your graph on, it can have a certain image, which I don't have anything. So after this screen, GPS, this is where you get a bunch of your uh, data for your GPS, what different GPS headings is pulling in, um, as well as adjusting these filters over here. I'm not going to touch anything. I don't want to mess this up, so I'm going to leave the screen as it is. System information, you can basically pull into a bunch of different system information pertinent to your Garmin device. I'm not going to touch anything. Station information is very similar, pairing with different things. Auto power up, I have off in the simulator. I have on. In preferences, this is where you can change your units, which I have my units set to uh, custom. North reference is on mag. Position format is set as it shows right here. And then my time is set at auto. Uh, I like my time zone set at auto because if I change into a different time zone, I don't want to have to remember to change my time zone to whatever time zone I'm currently in. The next is language. Obviously, for me, it's English. Navigation, route labels, show name. Um, I don't really mess with much of this. Keyboard layout, QWERTY, screen capture on, data sharing on, menu bar display is 
at show. In your communications, you can set it up as you'd like. I don't really play around in here too much. You can set up wireless devices for the Garmin Helm app as well as your Active Captain, which is a really, really nice feature. Uh, it, it allows you to share waypoints as well as update your graphs. And then the Wi-Fi network, you can control the network name, the password, and other various settings. In your alarms, you can set up navigation system sonar, collision and weather alarms. Uh, navigation, I don't have anything. I, I don't need navigation alarms on. I'm looking at my graph at all times. System alarms, if you want voltage alarms or clock alarms, you can have it set. So if you're out on the water, you need to be off at a certain time, you can set a clock alarm. Sonar alarms, if you're in shallow water or deep water, or if there's a water temp, or if you guys watch Wicked Tuna, they have the fish alarm on. That's why the graphs always beep when, when they say there's a fish on the screen. It's because I have this fish alarm on. I have mine set to off just because I don't want that interference on there. And then fuel al alarms, which are what it says. If you have a fuel gauge hooked up to your graph, you can have that set for a certain alarm. Your vessel, you can kind of adjust different things in here. I didn't play with anything. This is all set to whatever the factory settings are and other vessels uh, don't have this set on anything either. So that is your settings menu. Now we're back at the home screen. Um, in this screen, we're gonna immediately go into nav chart. So when you're in your nav chart, and as I mentioned, we are in simulation setting. We're gonna go to a body of water inland somewhere where we actually have good mapping. Here, let's go to Okeechobee. So this is Lake Okeechobee. This is zoomed out. As you zoom in, you get more and more depth contours uh, depending on the map that you have pulled up. So as you see, all you have to do to move this cursor around is touch your screen. Um, this is a touch screen unit, so you touch your screen and you can move it anywhere that you'd like. You have your zoom options right here, in and out. Um, and as you can tell, I have depth shading on. Depth shading is something that I'll get into, but it's an awesome feature that's going to help you go out and, and catch more fish. It, it'll help you identify areas that these fish might be holding that you might not otherwise notice without the depth shading on. So in here, we're going to hit menu. We want to pull up the navigation chart menu. Waypoints and tracks, I have my tracks set on. My waypoints, you, I have a variety of waypoints in here you can review, sort and filter, search, new waypoint, and if you hit new waypoint, you can either enter coordinates or use the chart. When you hit use the chart, it'll ask you to go to a certain point on the chart like this. You're going to go to a certain point on the chart. So we want to go right there. You'd hit select. We do not want to drop a new waypoint, so I'm going to hit cancel. Or use current position. If you hit use current position, this is going to drop a waypoint wherever you are right now. You can also use navigate to, choose any of these waypoints, hit navigate to, it'll take you to that waypoint. Waypoint display, how do you want these waypoints displayed? You can display them all as certain icons or you can have them displayed as whatever they are. Um, active tracks, you can have your active tracks on. You can have your record mode. I have my record mode set to off interval resolution uh, and the track color is white for me. I don't need to change this. Some people will go into this and change the track color based on the day. Like a lot of tournament anglers, if they're fishing a four day event, they'll have the first day on yellow, second day on blue, third day on magenta, and fourth day on cyan. That's gonna allow you to really um, keep your tracks differentiated by the day so that way you know the current tracks that you're on and you're not fishing over water you've already fished that day. Uh, that's personal preference. I don't have that changing. And then you can clear your active track or follow your active track in this menu. You can also go into your save tracks right here. I only have one save track and that's when I wanted to run all the way up a river. I saved that track so that way I know I can always use that to run up that river and I never have to wonder where that track was. And then routes, you can build routes for yourself. If you wanna go from point A to point B but it's not a straight shot, you can build a route in that section there. The next is operating your other vessels. This is something if you have other devices hooked into this. I do not, so I don't play around in this menu. Then you can adjust your built-in map. For the Garmin GPS maps, you get 
two built-in maps. You get your Lakeview HD as well as your Blue Chart G2. Your Blue Chart are your big water navigation charts, um, and your Lakeview HD are your inland bodies of water. One thing Garmin is really good about is providing incredibly accurate one-foot contours. Uh, the Lakeview HD is awesome, especially for a lot of the lakes up here in Michigan. So that's the one I'll run if I'm inland. If I'm fishing the Great Lakes or big water, I'll, I'll fish the Blue Chart G2. I like to play around between the two, though, because there are some differences. Um, and maybe Blue Chart G2 will show you one thing, and Lakeview HD will show you something just a little bit different. And one of them might give you an advantage over the other. So I like to rotate between the two. Quick draw contours. This is an awesome feature that Garmin has where you can map your own lakes. You put a GPS, or excuse me, you put an SD card in the unit and you can map your own lakes by hitting start recording and driving around using your side view or your 2D sonar and basically map a body of water that isn't currently mapped or get more accurate maps of lakes that are already mapped. If you know that there's a channel swing that's a little bit different than what Garmin has mapped, you can use this quick draw contour um, to map that different contour swing. And then chart setup right here, you can adjust your tides and currents, um, your roses, which are different like icons that it'll show on your graph. I don't play around with that at all. Your inset map, your weather, and here's your chart appearance. This is where you really get into uh, like your depth shading and stuff. So orientation, I use head up for this graph. What that means is whatever direction I'm pointing, that's the direction that is at the top of the chart. On the graph up front, I run north up because sometimes on the big water you don't have reference points. So with north up, I always know a certain area is up. Whatever way my boat is pointing is the direction that I'm facing. Detail, I always keep it on most. I want the most detail, especially when I'm fishing. Uh, I want those one foot contours, but if you don't like all those contours, you can drop it down to one of these other options here. And then heading line, this will show you like a line in the direction that you're heading. I have mine set to off. The world map is full. Uh, I don't know what that really does. And depth shading. This is something I think a lot of people underestimate is the importance of depth shading. So I have depth shaded all the way up to 25 feet. The reason I like this is because like let's say there's a contour swing between 14 and 17 foot and you want to see like a little hump right here. Well I can only tell that because of the depth shading otherwise I'd have to go out there and really investigate this map to find that or like this little 10 foot hump out here in the middle of Lake Okeechobee. Now I've never been there. Um, I wouldn't have known that existed if that depth shading wasn't on and it's extremely obvious. Or this little 13 foot hole right here in the middle of all that. 12 to 14 foot. Um, it, it's just really easy to identify areas that might not otherwise show up very easily. So I have this set uh, as the following. We're going to go back to home and we're going to pull up our side view. So if you come into a, a unit screen here and you want to choose one of these two, you touch whatever segment that you want to open up. Then you hit this expand button and it'll expand it to that whole page. Now with this you can go into the menu and adjust that certain screen. So my contrast that I have set is actually typically set closer to about 85. Um, when I put it on simulation it looks like it automatically pulled out some of my settings. So my contrast is set typically around 85. Where I fish a lot um, other than the Great Lakes there's actually relatively soft bottom, and so 85 gives me the best reading. My brightness is set at auto medium. Uh, this is a good medium point for me, but if I'm really wanting to see farther out, like let's say I bump this up to 120 feet, I'm going to bump this up to auto high. Auto high is going to give you a little bit brighter return, um, and it's going to give you the ability to see a little bit further out as you expand your view range. So auto medium is pretty much always where I have it set uh, unless I'm going over 100 feet. The frequency is 455 kilohertz. I have mine almost always set to no zoom but let's say that you want to just scan docks on the right side of the boat. You can do a zoom like this and on this bottom graph segment you can set it so up here your zoom is set to the right side of the boat. The range if I'm 15 foot or deeper, I change it to about 120 foot. That's going to allow me to look further out from the side of the boat and it gives me a very good reading out that far. 
If I'm between 15 and 10, I have it set to around 70. And if I'm less than 10 feet of water, no more than 50 feet. 50 feet is the max. That's going to give you the best reading in that shallow water. Uh, so the shallower you are, the smaller you want your range to be. Then transmit, obviously I want it on, but let's say you don't want your, your unit chirping, you can turn it to off. Side view setup, I have my scroll speed to fast. Now Garmin does have this thing called ultra scroll where it'll be very, very quick. Um, I just keep mine at fast, that's where I think I get the best reading from my unit. Noise reject, I have off, and TVG is set to medium. Um, I don't want the noise reject because I do want to see whatever's at the top of the water column. Sometimes there could be bait right below the surface of the water and I want to be able to see that, so I keep that noise reject off. Appearance is where you're going to be able to adjust your color scheme. My favorite color scheme is amber, but another great one is midnight blue, especially when um, it's early morning, midnight blue is really, really nice color scheme. But with midnight blue, you're going to have to adjust your brightness down a little bit. Midnight blue has a really, really strong white return, so you're going to want to drop your brightness down when you're using midnight blue. There's also a ton of other options, but my personal preference is amber. Overlay data, uh, I keep it hidden. I do not need to know time of day. That's shown in the bottom corner for me uh, over there. But this is what I have mine set as. I keep my depth line and my range lines hidden. Let's say you want to know how far out things are, you can turn your range lines on. I don't need to know that. I can pretty much use these indicators down here and get a good guess. View selection, if you only want to view to the right of the boat or left of the boat, you can do so using this view selection in your appearance settings. You also can adjust your alarms. Um, this is something we already touched on, but you can adjust it in this field as well. And you can change your sonar right in this menu here. So let's say we want to go to, tradi to traditional sonar. You can adjust it in here. And then we're going to start adjusting the color schemes and everything on traditional sonar. So in the menu here, my gain is typically set around auto medium. Um, it just really depends on the return. If there's a lot of debris in your water, you might drop your return down. But auto medium for me, again, is, is a pretty easy setting to get the best, cleanest return. My frequency, I actually have chirp, so I'm going to set mine on chirp. Chirp's going to give you the cleanest return, so if you have the chirp capability, I recommend putting chirp on. I set my zoom to no zoom. I don't need it to zoom in on the bottom or anything, but if I am running my graph and I want to see very, something very nuancy on the bottom, I might set it to a bottom lock zoom with the bottom 10 feet. That's going to show me like little nuancy things so I can identify different types of bottom composition like rock to gravel or something like that. Typically it's set to no zoom. For 2D sonar I have my range set to auto. I just think it gives me the best flexibility because it'll move up and down depending on the bottom um, depth. Transmit on or off if you want to start or stop your sonar and then sonar setup. Um, scroll speed again is fast. Noise reject is off. Color limit, smoothing, uh, surface noise, I have that set to off and TVG is set to medium. My appearance, my favorite color scheme is blue, just like you see it here. But there are other cool color schemes. Yellow is very similar to the traditional Lowrance color scheme. You also have your classic blue, which is traditional Garmin. Uh, classic white, which is another traditional Garmin color. Your maroon, which is like your hummingbird colors. And there are a bunch of other extras um, if you'd like to go in there and play around with those. Color gain, I have it set to default. I don't play around with that. A scope, I have set to off. Depth line, hide. Edge, off. And pick advance, I have set one to one. I don't know what that does. Alarms, same. Have set to off. Advanced, uh, off and off for shift off. Echo stretch, off. Installation, this is going to let you know your transmit rate, uh, your power, your filter width, and your sonar defaults. I'm going to leave that as it is. Now we're going to pull up my down view, and down view is an awesome feature, especially when you're trying to identify fish. My contrast is going to be set at 87. Um, this for me is the best setting that I get out of my down view. Now, if you have a ton of debris, you can change your contrast a little bit to bring that down or up a little bit, but for the most part, 87 is where I leave it. My brightness, auto medium, I, I leave it 
very much there for the most part unless I'm fishing super deep and then I'll drop it up to auto auto high frequency a lot of people say not to run it at the same frequency as your side view I leave it at 455 kilohertz I really really like 455 kilohertz and the options that it gives me zoom I have it set to no zoom same thing as 2D sonar you can set it to bottom lock if you're looking for something really specific on the bottom but for the most part I have it set to, uh, to no zoom Range at auto, I like to see it move up and down unless I know there's a very specific depth that I'm looking in. Transmit on or off, whether or not you want to turn your down view on or off, you can change that setting there. And then the down view setup. <clears throat> Again, scroll speed is fast. Noise reject is off. Surface noise, I want it to show my surface noise. Um, that's something I want it to show because if there's something super high in the water column, I want it to show me that. TVG is set to medium. My appearance, color scheme, amber again is my favorite. Midnight blue is good for early morning. Midnight blue I actually really, really like in down view. I just think it gives you a really, really clear return um, to see all these little golf ball fish in here. But amber is a great color too. Overlay data, you can show your different data. I have my time of day hidden because when you're actually using the unit, it'll show it to you in the bottom left-hand corner. And depth line I have hidden. Alarms, they're all set to off. Installation, you can adjust your uh, sonar defaults or check your transducer diagnostics. This is going to show you exactly what's going on with your transducer. And then from there, you can go back to the home screen. Now, let's say that I want to add a favorite. You're going to go into menu, add to favorites, and you can choose a certain chart to add to that favorites menu, whether it's a combo, whether it's one of these smart modes. You can add whatever you'd like to that favorites menu. Let's say you want to create a new combo. You're going to go into combos, you're going to go to menu, add a combo or add a combo, and then you can adjust your combo name. You can adjust the layout to a variety of different layouts that Garmin has offered, and adjust your overlays. I typically have my overlays set to off. Uh, I just really don't need to know the overlay data in the sidebar, so I have it set to none. And then you can adjust your 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 combo as you'd like. Whether you want a nav chart there, let's say you want your down view over here, and then your combo set up. So these are all of the settings that I have on my Garmin unit. So I know that was ultra technical. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys got a lot of information from me running through my graphs with you guys. I know there's a ton of data. There's a ton of information here. Um, but if there's something else you'd like to know, let me know in the comment section. I'll get back to you and respond as detailed and as technically as I possibly can. If I don't know the answer, I have contacts that can get you the information that you'd like. If you guys enjoyed this video, please go down and give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Share it with anyone that you think might find this data useful or information useful. As always, thank you for watching. Take care. Tight lines. God bless.